What's going on guys? It's Token and today we are back with some more IPBL action as this is going to be week three and we are going up against the Miami Infernames and their coach Wimar. Sorry if I butchered that. However though I went to your channel to even try to figure out how to pronounce WMAR and I still had no clue. So sorry if I butchered that. However though I'm excited for this battle. I know we got hacks out of last week's battle. I'm excited to try to bounce back, get this league back on the right footing because I do know that we drafted a strong team. I know that we just we had a rough week one because we didn't have Reuniclus, and I just had to play. I, I didn't bring the best team, even considering that. And then week two, we kind of got hacked out. So I'm excited to just try to get back on a good footing and uh, just get back to winning some games and just doing well. So thank you guys for supporting. As always, your support is greatly appreciated. If you do end up enjoying, definitely leave a like as it grows so far with supporting the channel. As well, subscribe to the channel for more league format action as well as VGC. Don't be alarmed. VGC is coming back to the channel. I will explain that more in depthly at a later period. Um, just some issues have been arising with BGC as well as I did take a break. However, let's just focus on the task at hand, which is this league format battle. So, the Miami Infernos. Their team is going to consist of Weavil, Savali, Salamence, Nihiligo, Ditto, Coyster, Togetic, Talonflame, Himali, Kadabra, and Ferrothorn. So, a pretty threatening team. I feel like I prepped pretty well for everything other than Weavil. Just didn't really see anything that was Assault. Just that combination of Ice and Dark is really bad for our team as well, since it gets like Poison Jab as well. So, uh, and then just, I, if you don't resist Ice type move, it's going to hit you pretty hard. So, we just didn't really have the best switching into Weavil. So, other than Weavil, I feel like we got, like, we have solid answers offensively. Just switching into it from a defensive st uh standpoint is going to be a little tough for us. However, though, I feel like we still brought a really threatening team that puts a lot of pressure on my opponent's team. So let's just hop right into the team, and then we'll hop right into the battle. So the team we are bringing is going to start out with Coco Butter, a.k.a. Tapu Coco, who is this week, let me go back to Showdown, who is this week is going to be a Life Orb set running Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Dazzling Beam, and Roost. Uh, Thunderbolt and Volt Switch, obviously, just stab options. Volt Switch for Switch Initiative, and Thunderbolt for things like the Talon Flame, for things like uh, things like the Coyster, things like the Togetic, a um, few things, a lot of things don't resist Thunderbolt on this team, so Thunderbolt's going to hit like a truck, especially with the Live Orb, especially with Electric Surge on uh, to our disposal and no opposing terrain to stop that. So um, Tabaco got a solid matchup, then Dazzling Gleam for the Nihiligo, for the Salamance and stuff like that. I needed to run a Life Orb, I almost went to run the Zemu, but I needed the Life Orb to guarantee the Oko on a, or just to have like a really high chance of Okoing on a uh, regular standard Salamence set. I really want to have a solid chance of maybe just getting rid of Salamence, so I decided to prioritize running Life Orb, and then Roost, so I can Roost back up if Tapu Koko does get a little bit worn down, and uh, continue to keep this thing as a very threatening offensive threat for us for the entirety of this match. So Tapu Koko is going to be huge. Um, EV spread is going to be 288 in speed, just to hit that 196 speed set, which outspeeds Talon Flame. Obviously not if it has its... Um, Gale Wing still an active, it will still go faster if it goes for a Brave Bird or Tailwind or some type of flying type move. However, though, um, if it's already weakened and it doesn't have Gale Wings, then uh, 288 hits 196, which will just slightly outspeed it. 252 on Special Attacks still hit as hard as possible. And then uh, just 12 dumped in HP and 12 dun dumped in Defense and 4 dumped in Special Defense. Just have a little bit of bolt to our disposal, so maybe we can lift some hits a little bit better and then roost off some damage and for some switches with Tapu Koko. Next is going to be a Choice Scarf uh, Mind Shell. And if you guys remember from the MPL Division 2 days, this is a Pokemon that I love putting a Choice Scarf on. Um, so I'm excited to be using Mind Shell um, in this matchup, especially with the Scarf. It's what I'm most comfortable with. Uh, it's my most comfortable item on Mind Chow. Just really think it's one of the best Scarfers in League format and just in general. But yes, it's going to be run a move set of High Jump Kick, U Turn, Stone Edge, and Knock Off. High Jump Kick to hit like a truck, to hit the uh, Ferrothorn really hard. It won't Oak Hole Ferrothorn more than likely unless he's running some non defensive set, which would be weird. But won't Oak Hole it, but will hit it like a truck. U Turn to hit things. Just get that switch initiative. I'm not sure how much I'll click U Turn until the Ferrothorn's down, but still want to have it to my disposal. Uh, Stone Edge. To hit the Togetic, to hit the Talon Flame, to hit the Coyster, and to hit the Salamance. So, yeah, that hits a lot of things. And then just uh, knock off, just for like, I guess. I, I, I didn't really see any other filler, filler move I really needed. So, knock off's just, I guess, for like Kadabra or something, but um, I don't really see myself clicking knock off much either. But it's just good coverage to have, as knock off is just extremely solid. Uh, Mind Child said it's going to be 44 in speed. That's all I needed to outspeed Talon Flame, so I didn't feel like I needed to invest any more. As um, I tried to think of mm, trying to run enough speed to outspeed a Choice Scarf Nihiligo, but then um, I can't remember the exact reason why I decided not to do that. 
But um, considering that Nihiligo hit reaches a 103 speed, oh, I think it was because of the damage that I would start. Um, I didn't like the damage that I was outputting on Ferrothorn. I really want this thing to be a solid answer to Ferrothorn. Considering that Ferrothorn can just go for Gyro Ball if it lists a hit on us and we're one v one in it. So I just wasn't liking the damage I was doing on Ferrothorn, so I decided to prioritize making this really offensive. Considering I have an every time switch in into Nihiligo that I'll get into later. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much mine, Shell. Also with 100 in defense, I had a lot of leftover EVs, 252 on attack with an atom in nature to hit like a truck, and then just 4 in HP. So I'm excited to use mine, Shell. I think it'll be very crucial in this matchup. Then we get right... Oh, uh, let me... Uh, let me just go back. Alright, anyways, we get into Death Note. I was trying to follow the the order I have them on on Showdown, and that just ended up being a mess. Anyways, we get into Death Note, a.k.a. Um, Dublade. And I decided to bring Dublate this week just to avoid being sweeped by Coyster. I didn't really see any other option, really any solid option for us to avoid a sweep by Coyster other than Dublate. And uh, the reason being is that Dublate has that monster defense stat. And even after being boosted, Coyster is going to do crap damage to Dublate with its uh, rock. With its either rock, not rock, um, uh, rock blast or its icicle shard. Uh, both of those are icicle shard. Oh my god. Um, icicle spear. There we go. Um, both of those are going to do very laughable damage, and then it also sometimes carries explosion. It's also not even going to, obviously, Dublade's immune to that, being a ghost type. So, I thought Dublade was a solid check to that Pokemon if it does somehow get set up on us. And uh, we could just hit it with a Sacred Sword for super effective damage, or even an Iron Head if it's already weakened. And uh, I just feel like Dublade has a decent chance of sweeping. I kind of need Weavile out the picture, but once Weavile's gone, uh, Dublade does a lot. Uh, but this is where my team starts to show um, its weakness to Weavile, so I'll definitely have to play around Weavile pretty well to avoid being pursued, trapped by it with this Dewblade, and just avoiding being knocked off too much, because I don't have a lot to switch into knockoff either, so I just really got to play the, the Weavile smartly, but I feel like I brought a pretty sneaky answer to it, so I'm hoping that works out. This is the one little thing, I, cheeky thing I got for it. And then we get into, oh, and let me go back. Let's go back. Let's take a trip back. Uh, Dublade set's just going to be 2, it's pretty standard, 244 in HP, 164 in attack with a uh, brave nature, want to be as slow as possible, and then 100 in special defense to maybe even take some special hits. A little bit better if I have to switch like this in on Nihiligo or something, I uh, just want to definitely still have some special defense investment, considering Dublade's 49 speed stat is pretty lackluster, so just in case I have to switch it on that, um, uh, with the Evil Light and with a little bit of investment, it's not too bad, but it is still kind of laughable. Then we get into Blobby Reuniclus, and I saw this as my only real choice scarf Nihiligo switch in. So even though I already brought one Weavile Week Pokemon, I felt like I had to bring another. And um, that is going to be uh, Blobby this week. And Blobby is going to be running a pretty interesting set of Psy Shock, Focus Blast, Trick Room, and Recover. I'm not sure I've ever brought this Pokemon and not brought Calm Mind on it, just because I think it's one of the best, if not one. It's not that, No, it's not the absolute best, but it's definitely one of the best sweepers for me, personally. I just really use it well, and I enjoy using it a lot, and I love Regenerator, so it just works out extremely well for me. But, um, yeah, I'm not bringing Calm Mind this week because I felt like we had a really solid Trick Room matchup. I mean, reversing the speeds and then using my some of the slower tier Pokemon I am bringing this week, as well as combine them with the faster Pokemon. So I use very fast offense with uh, Tapu Koko outspeeding my opponent's entire team, entire team barring scarfs, and um, Mind Chow outspeeding my opponent's entire team barring scarfs as well. Considering that if my opponent's running some scarf fully speed invested in Hilgos and stuff, that will also outspeed even my scarf Mind Chow. However, though. Um, so I felt like I had a pretty good Trick Room matchup, and then also, like I said, I feel like this is my only Nihiligo, Scarf Nihiligo switch in, especially if I got a Beast Boost or something, really my only switch in. So, but I decided to bring the Trick Room so that I could Trick Room, and then I could go for a Focus Blast and Annihilate Weavile. I don't, I don't feel like my opponent will run a Sash um, Weavile. If they do, and then they still get the knockoff, and it takes out Reuniclus, that's fine. Then we go into, uh, then we go into Frieza, and we just Ice Shard, and we take it out. However, though, um... I don't envision that. I do feel my opponent will be Life Orb or something, and we will be able to go for a Trick Room, and then Focus Blast, pray we don't miss, and then knock this thing out, and uh, be in a very solid position. And, and I felt like Trick Room also made Dublade just so much more scarier for my opponent's team as well. So I really do like uh, I really do like those options. And then Psy Shock for like the Nihiligo, and anything else that doesn't really resist Psychic type moves. I would have loved to still have Calm Mind, but I need to recover, and then I needed those two coverage moves most definitely. So... Um, I hope this set works out. I definitely hope it works out. First time I'm not actually just bringing Calm Mind on Reuniclus. Its full set is going to be 252 in HP for both 100 in defense with a bold nature 
and then 156 in special defense because that's all I really needed to be able to still counter that uh, mean hill ago. So I just dumped what I could, and then I decided to still be pretty defensive, so I maybe can still live like a knockoff from Weavile or something, and just still nuke that thing, and then still have my Arena Clip so I can just regenerate out, regenerate out, and get it back at a decent amount of health, and then we still have this monster's threat. So I'm hoping that works out pretty well. Then we get into Crimson, a.k.a. Uh, why can I not think of your name? Dredagon. And I feel like I need a Dredagon in this one for the Talonflame specifically. Um, if Talonflame is Brave Birding, it's going to get Recoil. It's going to get the Rocky Helmet damage, and then it's going to get the Rough Skin damage. Um, I just really wanted to, like, I'd wanted my opponent to feel like his Talonflame can't do anything until um, uh, Crimson here is gone. I wanted to feel very useless until Crimson was gone. It also does a good job of do somewhat dealing with the Ferrothorn as well, especially with Fire Punch, which is going to do a lot of damage, even though I'm fully invested in bulk and defense. Um, I, it still does a good chunk of damage considering Ferrothorn is four times weak to that. And then um, I also can switch this in on my. Oh, so we got yeah, my opponent's team. Um, there was one other thing. I think that's kind of it then. Oh, Savelli. If Savelli gets brought and it's like trying to U-turn off my team. Um, Dragon's a pretty solid all-time switching into that as well. I decided to bring Stealth Ox on it. I don't have Stealth Ox on anything else. I also don't have Hazard Removal this week, so I'm, I'm a pretty nervous for Hazard Removal and Weavile. Those are two things I'm nervous for. Other than that, I think we've probably a solid, solid team. And I'm also nervous for Z-Move, Moxie, Salamence. Just always got to be afraid of that Pokemon. It's a freaking monster now that we have Z-Moves. Salamence is already good, but with Z-Moves, it's an absolute monster. One of the best Pokemon in the league. And just that. One of the absolute best sweepers along with Moxie, Z-Move, Gyarados. But, anyways, I'm bringing Stealth Rocks, Fire Punch, Sucker Punch, and Dragon Tail. Sucker Punch to just knock out some weakened threat that, like, weakens itself enough with the recoil it takes from touching this Pokemon. Dragon Tail to just switch around my opponent's team after setting up Rocks. Didn't really see the need for any other coverage. I kind of thought about Gung Shot, but I'm not afraid of Togetic in the slightest. That's a Reuniclus switch in every single time. Or a Dewblade switch in. That's a Dewblade switch in every single time. Um... And then, yeah, that's pretty much the set. Uh, and like I said, it's very standard. 252 in defense, 252 in HP, and 4 just dumped in special offense with a relaxed nature to once again be as slow as possible. There's another Pokemon that's really slow. I feel like it can be used decently well with the Trick Room up as well. So I'm excited to use the Stratagon set as well. And then last but not least, we get into Frieza, a.k.a. Sneasel. And um, I definitely felt the need to bring Sneasel to this matchup because of the Salamence. I need Ice Shard so that Salamence doesn't just wreck my team. Then knock off so that I can... Uh, um, there's just, uh, obviously, Stab Knockoff. It's absolutely beautiful. It hits like a truck. It's just really, really good. I do have to watch out with bringing this Pokemon in on... Uh, bring this Pokemon in and then my opponent switching to Ferrothorn. That can end up bad. I decided to bring a Choice Bandit set because if my opponent does get Rocks up really early on with their Ferrothorn, um, I don't want this thing just chunking its own health with Life Orb because I don't have any Wish Patch or anything that's going to be able to keep this at a good amount of health. So I decided to not use an item that was going to be whittling down my own health. It could end up biting me in the butt if uh, my opponent is able to realize that we're banded and then just goes in there. Salamence and starts Dragon Dancing out, but however, we still can go for that Ice Shard, and then if it does still kill my Weavile, then I can go for Sucker Punch with Dragon and hope that that combination of priority type moves can knock out Salamence. So that's pretty much what I'm hoping for. And uh, yeah, Toys Band's going to hit like a truck, and um, this it has solid coverage for my opponent's entire team. It just, it's a little tricky just with me not being able to switch up my moves. But um, the set on this one's going to be 164 with a Jolly Nature, 164 in speed with a Jolly Nature, so I can outspeed... Um, it can't outspeed the Weavon, it can't outspeed the Talonflame, but it can outspeed the entirety of my, the rest of my opponent's team. I think it's enough investment to outspeed me. Hello, I think that's the next fastest thing. Um, yeah, and then uh, 252 in attack to still hit as hard as possible. 36 in HP, 52 in defense, and 4 in special defense. Um, just a little bit more investment in defense in case I got to take some like priority type moves. Or in case I need to switch this in on a knockoff, because this is my only knockoff switching. So I might have to switch this in on a knockoff and say, screw the choice ban. At least I'm still not chunking my own health when I go for offensive type moves. So that's pretty much the team this week. I'm hoping it works out. Like I said, I'm worried about Weavile. I'm worried about Salamence. But I think we got a good, pretty good answer to Salamence. I feel like we got a tricky answer to Weavile that I'm hoping works out. And then uh, just a little bit worried about Stealth Rocks. But I feel like uh, we brought a pretty good team. And I'm hoping we can use it well. It's still really offensive, so hopefully um, it still works out with everything. But I'm excited for the matchup. I'll see you guys when we're all connected. All right, guys, we are at the battle against the Miami Infernape Center coach Wimar, or Warm. I don't know which one. Uh, however, he did. He. I'm really happy he brought the Ditto. I forgot to say um, in a little quick recap of the team builder, but a main reason why I also didn't want to run Combine Reuniclus was one because of how heavily it threatened threatened it was by Weavile, which I don't see, which makes me want to cry. But um, 
was also for the Ditto. I didn't want Ditto getting all those boosts and just boosting up and then being able to just be as threatening to our team as we are to his team. So I'm very excited that I didn't bring Call My Reuniclus for that reason. Forever Saint No Weevil is good and bad at the same time. It's had a lot of pre well, I had a good little plan for it. Um, I guess Trickum can still work out. Um, and then obviously my Pokemon being slow is good for Gyro Ball on on uh, on the ooh, why can I not think right now on the Fortress, but uh, Ferrothorn, not Fortress, Ferrothorn. Uh, and he brought the Hitmo lead, and I didn't bring a lot of prep for the Hitmo lead. And I'm just trying out the bottom screen right there. Um, obviously that can become an issue. Um, it's currently covering uh, Crimson. If that ends up being like a bigger issue while the battle's going on, I'm just gonna get rid of the bottom screen. As you can see, I don't have a layout for this league. I want to give it a try because I really do like having the bottom screen. But if it becomes an issue, then I'm just not, just not gonna have it there. But yeah, Talonflame, happy to see Talonflame. Jodagon's in every single time switching into Talonflame. Even if he will whistles me, I do not care. Um, happy to see Ferrothorn. I feel like I, I got decent answers for Ferrothorn. Oh, I'm kind of happy to see Ferrothorn. Himalee scares me. I'm not happy to see Himalee. I didn't prep that well for Himalee. And yeah, the bottom screen seems like it could be an issue in that spot. So not fully sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It looks like it can be an issue though. Um, it's covering the time and everything. It's covering the time. If it's in this top right corner, is that an issue? I guess it covers the number of turns in there. What if I make it just like decently smaller? I don't think that's that bad. Um, I can make it even a little bit smaller. I just really like having it there. I really don't like having battles without that bottom screen somehow visible. And it's actually a little messed up. Uh, oh no, just can just couldn't fully see that. Um, I think that works. Um, let me guys, let me know if you guys if that bothers you if that bothers you the bottom screen being right there. Um, I just wanted it in some form, way, or fashion. Had a very strong hunch that my opponent would prioritize leading with Ferrothorn, so I'm hoping this high jump high jump kick kills. He does have the Chapel Bear, and he might be he likely will be able to take us out with a Gyro Ball if he does go for it. So let's pray he doesn't go for Gyro Ball, and he just wants to get his rocks up. Let's pray that. Please just get your rocks up. Just get your rocks up. All right, cool. I'm fine with that. Perfectly fine. Um, I don't think he has anything he wants to switch in on a high jump kick, though. I do not think you have anything you want to switch on a high jump kick. Talonflame, I guess. That is not a switch in, though. Yeah, he doesn't have a switch in into this. So I'm just going to high jump kick again. I have no reason not to. But Chopperberry. I mean, yeah, we take out the Ferrothorn really early on, which is beautiful. That is great. Goodbye, Ferrothorn. Um, and I still didn't reveal that I'm Scarf. You might think I'm Scarf, especially since I led, but um, this allows me to actually freely go for U-turns now, which is great. can actually go for Switch Initiative now. Um, he might go into Nihiligo because it might be Scarf. He might just go into Talonflame because I don't have rocks on the side of field. Talonflame is the most likely thing to switch in. However, I go right into Dredagon, and that thing weeps if it goes for Brave Bird. And then I get my rocks up as it switches out. And he goes into the Ditto. Interesting. Interesting. How much would a... Let's go... Let's go... Long sleeves. Let's go long sleeves again. Pace. Can I please pace? Oh god. Oh, we both Oko each other, so that would come down to who goes who goes faster. I don't think that's something I I care to. I don't think that's something I care to figure out. Let's try to go on. Crimson. It does too much damage to Crimson though. Do I just chance this? Do I chance this not being faster? I think I'm gonna chance it. Ah, oh, this might not be smart though. Mind Child does a number to his team. And he might think I'm gonna go straight into um Dewblade. I really have no reason not to switch into Dewblade here. And what's Ditto speeds that? I should be faster, right? Well no, it takes on my stats. It takes on all of my stats, so we do speed time, we do speed time. Ditto's a confusing Pokemon. 
If he knocks off and I switch out, I'm gonna feel stupid. I think I'm just gonna go for it. We hit, do we kill? And we kill, let's go! Let's go! We won the speed tie, let's freaking go! Woo! Let's go, long sleeves, aka mind shell, let's freaking go! So now Ditto's gone as a threat. What do you bring in now? You gotta go into town flame. You have to go into town flame now. Let's freaking go. I just did not feel comfortable with him knocking off. I felt like that was a pretty obvious play. I'm going for knockoff, so I switched right into Crimson right away. And if he wants to go for Braid Bird, so be it. He wants to go for U-turn, so be it. You're taking a lot of damage every time you bring this Pokemon in. He likely will go for U-turn just to get that switch initiative because he knows that I'm probably feeling heavily threatened. And now he might think that I'm Scarf now. Um, he's still... He doesn't know my item now. That's the only thing. He still doesn't know my item. So you switch out. Oh, no Salamence. That is crazy. No Salamence as well. No Weavile, no Salamence. That is crazy. Oh, and we see the Z move now. Um, Does that take me out? I forgot Talon Flame is another Z move move. Other than his... Uh, other than his uh, other than a Salamence. Uh, this doesn't take me out. It doesn't take me out. Which is good. Yeah, it doesn't take a cell. Oh, but he doesn't take the damage from that, though, because of that. That's trash. Would he go for the Brave Bird now? I think Stealth Darks are still my plan, not Sucker Punch. Yeah, I'll only do 31%. Stealth Darks my play if I somehow live this. If he goes for Brave Bird and I somehow live, that sucks he doesn't take the actual damage though from that now. And he does switch out, so I'm glad I prioritized going for Stealth Rocks. So now Talonflame won't be so fast and the rest of my team will outspeed it and it's going to take 50% when it comes back in. So here, I think I just avoid this thing setting up on my team. Just in case it's running something for Dublay, I don't, I don't think it gets anything. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I didn't look in-depthly at its moveset, but I thought Dublay walls this pretty well. But just in case, I'm just going to go for Dragon Tail. Pretty much going to sack this thing just to make sure. Um, just to make sure if this thing gets set up, it, it gets completely wasted. As long as I don't miss the Dragon Tail. If I miss the Dragon Tail, then R.I.P. my life. Yeah, it's awesome that he switched out. And he does just go for Rapid Spin, so we will... We'll be dragon telling this thing out. I forgot this thing got rapid spin. It will take some damage though. I will be dragon telling it out. So maybe a fire punch wouldn't have been the worst move. I completely forgot this thing got rapid spin. What does he go into? Town Oh, uh, give me the new hill ago. Not what I was looking for. I'm gonna keep this around. Gonna keep this around, gonna go into Reuniclus, and I think I'm gonna set up a Trick Room. Because I think Reuniclus, on everything he brought, I think Reuniclus has the answers. Unless this is Specs. This is Specs, then RIP me not running more Special Defense Investment. Does this go for the Power Gem? Does solid damage, but nothing too crazy. Doesn't get a crit. We'll get our Leftovers Recovery. And I am going to look at his team, and... Oh, he might just go into Ditto, thinking that I'm Calm Mind. Ditto makes a lot of sense if he thinks I'm Calm Mind, but Ditto, I just switch in, switch in Dewblade right away. Yeah, Dewblade does a number to his team, because the Ferrothorn's already gone. So yeah, Dewblade does a number to his team, so I think I just Trick Room here. Yeah, I'm going to go for the Trick Room. He withdraws. Probably into Ditto. Polygama. No, into this. Alright, that's fine. We go for... We go for Focus Quest and pray we don't miss. Yep, we go for Focus Quest and pray we don't miss. He might switch out. And we don't miss. Woo! Goodbye. 
Yep, goodbye. So now that that's completely gone as a threat. And he doesn't really have a switch into this. He likely has to go into the Ditto. And if Ditto comes in, I immediately go into Dew Blade. If he switches up the freaking Yum, is that Ditto? No, it's Talonflame. How is Talonflame to answer this? Especially without being able to spawn. I only does 46%. I could just recover off that damage every single time. I do a lot with Shy Shock. I do up to over half. I can do 47%. You're going to chunk your own health in the process of this. Oh, I see, I see, I see. You still have, what's it called, to your disposal? Yeah, so I'm just going to switch into Drodagon, actually. Because he still has the Gale Wings. I wasn't thinking about Gale Wings, so he will be faster even under Trick Room. So I go into Drodagon, and I allow him to go for... Brave Bird and chunk his own health. Goes for Sword Dance. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. He might try to stall me out now. So I'm actually going to drag until in case he doesn't attack me. In case he doesn't attack me, I'm just going to drag until this thing out. Because I don't want a Swords Danced Up uh, Talon Flame in front of my face. I do not. And he does just go for the Brave Bird now. So this is going to chunk his health because of the Rocky Helmet and... And um, Rough Skin. Meaningless crit. And he will no longer have... Uh, he will no longer have Gale Wings. So Tapu Koko will outspeed. Uh, Mind Shell will outspeed. And um, a lot of different Pokemon will underspeed this thing now. I still don't think we. This is. There's a chance I still don't kill a Reuniclus at the health it's at. It's a decent chance. So, how does. How does Sneasel deal with this? Sneasel does heaps of damage to it. Oh, yeah, that's my freezing set. Oh, uh, yeah, Sneasel with an Icicle Crash. I really don't want a uh, chance to miss. We are still under Trick Room, so I am. I would be faster with Sneasel, even though I'm slower naturally. Um. Uh, Runeclist at full health though, I think that's my switching, because if he goes for Brave Bird, then he chunks his own health. Um, but no, I don't want to lose Runeclist though, because what is he up left? He doesn't have the Coyster. Huh. He doesn't have the Coyster. He doesn't have the Ferrothorn. Doesn't need Hiligo, Talonflame, Hitmalee. I don't remember what else. And my best answer to the Himalit is Rena Quest by far. By far. So I think I go into Sneasel and chance an Icicle Crash miss, honestly, and just take the Rocks damage. I think that's my best play. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, he still has the Ditto. Huh, Ditto switching can actually be really annoying. Oh, I didn't think of that. Ditto switching can be really, really annoying. Oh, no, no, I killed Ditto. I killed Ditto, I killed Ferrothorn, and I killed Koyster. I knew there was one more thing that was gone. Alright, so he just has these three. And none of them want to switch into Icicle Crash, so I go for Icicle Crash, and I hope we don't miss. And we do miss. We do miss. So I just let this die now. It doesn't really serve any other purpose. It really doesn't. That really sucks. That's why I didn't want to go into this. That's why exactly. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, well, if this goes for attack, it has to go for Brave Bird and Flare Blitz, and he'll chunk itself again. Okay, okay. No reason to be that way. Yeah, it'll go for Brave Bird. It'll chunk. It'll ch well, not chunk, but it'll it won't have Gellings again. It won't have Gellings. 
exact reason why I didn't want to go for that, but I didn't want to risk the roll on uh, with Reuniclus and risk losing Reuniclus. It's the best answer for both of the two things my opponent has left in the Hiligo and in Himali. Just did not seem like the play. I do think now I just go into Tapu Koko or I go into long sleeves, but I would have to risk a Stone Edge. And considering I just missed an attack, I don't, I don't know how willing I am to risk that. So let's just make sure a Volt Switch and Tapu Koko can kill because a Nihiligo switching sounds very likely if I go into Tapu Koko. So let's just make sure that I kill with the Volt Switch. And I definitely, 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 definitely kill with a Volt Switch. So I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch. Um, I definitely outspeed this thing. It doesn't have its Gale Wings. So his answer was a nice play. Props to my opponent. That was a nice play. Concerned that he still had his Gale Wings. That was a pretty nice play. But yeah, I just Volt Switch. He goes into Nihiligo, and then I get that free switch in into Reuniclus, and I set up another Trick Room. I should be able to win from there, because then he won't, he won't have, uh, he won't have, uh, plus two, so, yeah, I should be able to win from there. Reuniclus should clean this game up. Or do I go into Dew Blade and try to win the game? Let's just go. I just want to make sure. Just check your blade. Just want to make sure I'm prioritizing my easiest way of winning. Um, plus two Sacred Sword has a chance of just doing like 53%, and I feel like that's literally just enough to where the Talon Flame can live. So I feel like that's not the play. Also, to do to hit my lead, just curious. It's reckless, I guess. Oh yeah, it does crap damage. Yeah, Reuniclus is definitely the play. Going to Reuniclus, I set up a Trick Room, and I should be able to win from there. Talonflame might. No, because Talonflame, even if it goes for a Brave Bird, it'll chunk its own health. Yeah, this should be game. This should be, this Reuniclus should lead us to the victory land. It should. And I am just sitting looking at my DS like crazy when I've had freaking everything right in front of me. And that does more damage than I would have liked, but it didn't poison, so that's all that matters in the long run. It didn't poison. Fix that just a little bit. So. There we go. Alright, Psyshock should definitely take this out. I don't even need to think about that player. Takes it out. Reuniclus takes out Nihiligo. So first Mind Child doing the work, and then now I think Reuniclus, and these are my Pokemon. These are the Pokemon that I love using. I love these guys. Regenerate are so good, and they're so good at using it. They're just, ah, oh, beautiful Pokemon. Downflint comes in. I feel like that was more health than it had before. I gotta make sure it doesn't sword dance up again. Um, I feel like it could kind of try to outstall me. To where I won't have Trick Room up anymore, at least when Hip Only comes back in. Oops, wrong one. Wrong one. Talon for me. Huh. Yeah, I definitely just Psy, psy Shock again. Um, he can roost up on it though. That's the issue. But he can't set up a Sword Dance, that's the thing. He cannot set up a Swords Dance. Anytime he goes for Swords Dance, he'll lose. He'll lose this Pokemon. Um, he might get into some Skull War of trying to. We're trying to go for uh, go for Roost until the Trick Room's done, and and then try to Swords Dance. I still don't really see what turn he's going to be able to go for that for. I think I might be doing slightly more damage to him than he's getting back from this recovery. And then I'm just recovering all my health back with leftovers. So yeah, this is definitely a losing battle for my opponent, especially uh, how much, let me check Showdown, how much, 
how much PP Roost has 16 PP, and he's only went for it. He's went for it twice now, and he went for it once earlier. So we're at the exact same amount. So yeah, when Trick Room ends, he would run out of Roost before I run out of Shy Shots. Or yeah, Shy Shots. Yeah, and I'm definitely doing a little bit more damage to him than he was doing to me. Finally prioritized going for the Brave Bird, realizing that he was in a losing battle. I still do not know why I'm looking out at my looking down at my DS screen and not looking up at the freaking game and everything I have right in front of me, so my apologies for that. Probably make this commentary a little bit less interactive, so my my apologies for that. Um, that is the last turn of Trick Room. Uh, my opponent can just go for... He can just go for a knockoff with his uh, Himalit, and that might be enough to take us out. Yeah, it's definitely enough damage with knockoff. Definitely enough damage. What's the item that the freaking uh, unburying him a week on? So I'm afraid of unburying him a week. Hey, mama. Endeavor first reversal. You wall breaker. Is that the help? No. Keeps giving me reckless. Um, keeps giving me reckless. I'm gonna switch out Reuniclus in hopes that it can live a knockoff later. I still doubt it. Let's see if we went for knockoff. He went for Endeavor, and it fell. I'm not sure what that was supposed to do, but that should be game. Dazzling Gleam should take it out. Oh, he went for Endure now, and then he tries to... Oh, he goes for Endure, and then he goes for Endeavor. Oh, he went for Endure first, and I didn't attack him. Okay, okay, okay. Now that's making sense. Now that actually makes sense. Oh, and then he... Oh. And now he's, like, super, super fast. Oh, crap. Oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. Oh, no, 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 no. No reason to be that worried. No reason to be that worried. I have um. Yeah, he's gonna take this out. I had no reason to switch in Dew Blade. I switch in Dew Blade and I go for a a very very safe uh, Shadow Sink. So thank God I, I kept alive one of my priority users in this game because that could actually be bad because his attack also raised there. And yeah, with that plus one in attack, um, he only three sweeps our team. Depends on how much speed he's running. If he's running full speed and he's at plus one. He's at plus one, let's go to 50. And let me look at my mind shot speed. Please me. I just want to know if I would have got swept if I didn't have a priority user. Because otherwise, then this thing is one of the craziest freaking Pokemon's ever. I just want to know if I got swept. So let me grab my phone and do a quick calculation. I'm just curious. So 139 times 1.5 would have been at a 208 speed, and my mind shell is at a. Ooh, he would have won the game. He would have won the game. I didn't run enough speed on my mind shell to outspeed this, and I don't think I could have. No, I think I could have. I definitely could have. Um, yeah, I definitely could have. So that was a mistake on mine. I even though I needed that damage. That I won it off on Ferrothorn, which ended up not mattering because he ran top one anyway, so it was a 2 a KO either way. I should have definitely ran enough speed on my Toy Scarf Mind Shell to outspeed and then bird in a uh, hit ball. I was not smart. But Shell Sneak should end the game. And that is going to be game. So we won a 3 0 against Wimar and the Miami and Fern Apes. GG's, man. Pretty freaking fun game. That was pretty free. That was pretty fun. A lot of the stuff we brought actually did work out pretty well to our disposal. Townflame got a little tricky when you went for Swords Dance. Really good play there. Um, Z move also threw me off. I, how did I forget about Townflame Z move? Trash on my end. Um, but yeah, pretty good game. I felt like he did everything he really could have in that game. Um, but it was fun. That was definitely a fun game. And I did say that I didn't have the most um, adequate prep for Hitmonlee, so it makes sense. 
that him only kind of made things a little bit scary at that end game. A really fun game. We finally got this bounce back win that we had been searching for. We're finally getting back on track. We are going to be one and two now. Still losing record. We got plenty of season left to get back on track. Don't know who we play next week. I never look at schedules for some odd reason. But when it's there, it's there. I'll try to actually look at schedules moving forward so I can tell you guys who we play next week so you can get hyped for the matchup. And I might even start leaving the Google Doc in the bio down below so you guys can check out people's teams so that you're not out of the loop on what everyone got and what's on their team and the matchups and everything. Anyways, though, guys, I'm going to get the heck out of here. I'll see you guys in the next IPBL video. For now, though, peace.